yeah, if I wanted to, I could double still, distill it so it's 180 proof. You know, like uh, if my American brothers and sisters or anyone who's traveled down there knows about the clear springs, that's uh, that's a very, very strong, a very pure type of uh, alcohol. I've seen many a fat man land his face on the sand in uh, with the, uh, under the influence of the pure springs and purple grape juice, to be honest with you. That's a fishing story. That did take place while we were fishing way up north in Quebec on um, some private lands, um, Zec Des Moines. And I mean, this uh, this particular Zec, Z-E or Z, I don't know, uh, Z-E-C, Zec. Uh, it was called Des Moines, and it was uh, just across. It was just north of the uh, Ottawa River at uh, Du Rivier, or Two Riviers, Two Rivers. Sorry. Um, so a bunch of us went up there uh, fishing. Now this particular Zach we we're talking about was bought up by an American firm, and. Uh, you know, you had to, you had to buy licenses to go into the Zec to fish, and uh, it was sort of bought by the day. And I think, I think we were in there for ten days, and it cost me 180 bucks just for the license to fish that particular Zec. And I also had to buy a Quebec province fishing license, so it would be legal for me to fish in that province. Now. Um, this particular Zach, this was a whole, a great big logging area that had been bought up by some American conglomerate. And uh, it was a big logging area filled with tiny, tiny logging roads. And there was hundreds of tiny little lakes in there. And the trout we caught, tiny, tiny little lakes. Amazing trout that we caught. The fishing we had was, oh. It was worth every nickel of the uh, the purchase price for the licensing on both parts. Uh, I did find it expensive, but uh, at the end of the day, after that experience, I thought, wow, that's uh, worth every nickel. When you have an opportunity to do something like that, you do it. So there's your Saturday Night Fire guy. As you can see, it's, this is the windswept shores of Lake Ontario. The wind is coming out of the northwest. I believe the lake is drawing it down there. You know, you get your cyclical uh, onshore or offshore breezes, right? And uh, right now, the uh, water is warmer than the land and it's drawing the air toward the lake, which is south of us, which is directly behind this fire. So. It's actually uh, absolutely beautiful out right now. Maybe it's 24 or 25 degrees or kind of 72 or something like that for my American brothers and sisters. But it's beautiful. Beautiful night to sit out. Beautiful night for a fire. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Saturday Night Fire. And some questions. Where do you think, where do you guys think uh, things are going to go come this fall? You know, with all this um, bug deal. Things like that. Things of, of those uh, sorts that are going on. 
and the control that's happening because of it. Okay, all right, let's talk about this. There's a lot of debate about the bug, okay? Is the bug real? Is the bug fake? Well, you can talk about that all day long if you want to. The fact of the matter is, what the fake or not fake bug is doing to the global economy. People are sat at home. People aren't working. You know, starting to open up. But there's so many businesses closed down, and, and that is job losses. As soon as any politician comes up and starts saying, hey, we've got a massive bump in, uh, in jobs, well, that's a bunch of BS. Because it's not true. Now, I will make a statement that uh, there was a report out of Canada in... I think when they uh, released the uh, second phase of reopening up here, there, there was a statement from Canada that jobs are up by over a million here in Canada. I mean, we're a small population of 30 million, so a million extra jobs, that's a big deal, right? But that's not an increase in jobs. That's just more people back to work than that were sat at home, you know? How many businesses are still closed? How many, pe how many businesses will remain closed? There's tons of them. Tony, uh, tons of mom and pop shops that'll remain closed. Uh, there's a ton of uh, big business, big, uh, sorry, big businesses closing their doors that employ people that will never go back to work for them. And they, ha they need to find work somewhere else so that they can pay their bills, right? Is that going to take place? I'm not sure. I don't see, you know, it, it might temporarily after the spike, after the first wave relieves itself a little bit before the second wave hits. When the second wave hits, when the second wave hits, I expect m more massive closures and more extreme uh, regulations on masks, gloves, hand sanitization, lineups at frickin' grocery stores and hardware stores and whatever stores you can possibly think of, you know? And here's a question for you folks. Okay. Maybe you guys know something more than I do. But I have a question about it. All right. It's about Walmart and McDonald's. Okay. Walmart and McDonald's got to stay open when nobody else was open. Why is that? You know, your corner store wasn't allowed to be open, but Walmart was allowed to be open with everyone walking around and bumping into each other. What the heck is up with that? Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not a fool. I understand Walmart owns a, a big chunk of the block. They got groceries, they got pharmacy. Oh, okay, they must legally be open. We need to provide those things. Well. The convenience store down in the corner, uh, other side of my block, sells bread too, you know? How long do they have to be closed for? Walmart could be open, but, but not the little guy. Why? Control? What do you guys think? Where do you think this is going? Are you going to stand for it? What will you settle for? What will you accept? Like, will you accept masks and uh, wearing masks and gloves and, and doing those things uh, in order that you can, like, if you don't, there's a lot of grocery stores up here, you don't have a mask, you're not coming in. So, guess what? If you don't, if you take a stand, you're not going to wear the mask. You're not going into the grocery store. You're not getting groceries. Are you going to pay your friend to go get groceries for you that will wear a mask? Or what are you uh, what are you willing to do about that? Are you willing to say, screw all that. I'll I'll uh, 
grow all my own food. Like we're talking meat and all the veggies and uh, grains and things that you need. What are you willing to do? How much are you willing to conform? There's a question for you. How much are you willing to conform? And if you're not willing to conform, what price are you prepared to pay to not conform? There's a very interesting question. And I really want your answers on that one. Sorry I talk so much. Sometimes I get in a the mood. There's been a lot of things on my mind lately. And I kind of wanted to uh, share them with you, uh, bounce those ideas off of you guys, and uh, you know, just see what your guys' thoughts were. Um, as well as a nice relaxing fire for our Saturday evening after having worked so hard in this heat all week. It's a beautiful fire, I will not deny. Yep. Happy Saturday, everyone. What are you doing over there? Uh, fireside chat. Join us? Well, come on, then. Yeah, come on, man. Ugh. <sighs> All right, so my uh, my neighbor just jammed some uh, recyclables into the uh, recycle bin here that exists outside my porch, and uh, I think he's going to come join us for a beer. It is, after all, Saturday evening, so I may not continue this video for that. Whether I do or not, inconsequential, doesn't even matter. He's a lovely man. He's all right. He's uh, doing his thing uh, here today. Uh, we'll just see about that. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to let this go on uh, much longer. I want to hear your guys' report on uh, what we discussed here, okay? So, just... Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and uh, I'll have a read of them. I can't promise you I'm going to respond to all of them, but uh, I will definitely, um, maybe I'll do another video on on my uh, take on what you guys say. But for now, this is going to be North Shore Preparedness, wishing all of you guys a very blessed Saturday evening and rest of the weekend. In the north shore of Lake Ontario. Stay well and safe all. Stay cool. Make sure you're prepared. What have you done? Uh, what have you done to prepare this week? Are you prepared? Prepare yourself, folks. Time is coming. North. Out for now. Where's the freaking button?